What's up guys, it's Bumpkins. Today is Wednesday, January 5th. It is the first new comic book day of 2022. And let me say, I hope you guys all had a safe and happy new year. Wednesday means new comic book day. New comic book day means new comic book call video. As always, I went down to Infinity Flux here in Chattanooga, Tennessee for another big old stack of books and really just one other thing. I mean, this is pretty much it for today, but we got some good books in here. And guys, let me say real quick that I'm enjoying this start to 2022 because in a in a move that's unprecedented for me, all the books I have here, I've read at least half of them already. So, you know, normally I'm saying I don't, I ha I'm, I'm catching up on this or I haven't read that yet. I've read at least half of these and it's really cool reading your books when they come out. So I'm gonna try to do that more. But let's jump into these because um, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man number 84, um, you know, as always I say, you know, I haven't read it yet because I haven't caught up, but I did catch up! I finally caught up with Amazing Spider-Man, like, all the way. Like, I read this earlier today, and, uh, it was really good, so it's, it's, that's kind of been a big weight off my shoulders, is I've had this giant stack of Spider-Man comics, uh, waiting to be caught up on, and I got everything read. I read all the way through Nick Spencer's run, uh, over the Christmas holiday, and caught up uh, on the Beyond storyline. Real quick, I'll say, I didn't love Nick Spencer's run, uh, all the Kindred stuff and the Sinister War. I didn't love it as much as I thought I would back when I was buying it without having read it. Uh, it was fine, I guess, but I'm kind of glad that it's over because I'm actually really enjoying this Beyond storyline. Um, I'm enjoying seeing Ben Riley run around and be part of this Beyond Corporation. And sort of, I wouldn't want this to be the forever Spider-Man story, but it's kind of fun while it's around and everything's gonna go back to normal at some point, we all know that. But this is fun, uh, Doc Ock is looking into the Beyond Corporation and that's what's really cool about this story is they seem like a pretty neat place, but you know that there's, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know there's something more that's gonna happen. Obviously Beyond sends Spider-Man out to deal with it and you got some like classic Spider-Man versus Doc Ock. I'm really enjoying this storyline uh, so far. It was a nice breath of fresh air after the 70-something issues of, of Kindred and the mystery of all that. This is a completely um, welcome change of pace, and I'm loving this so far. Avengers, Tech on Avengers number five. I want to say that there's one more in this. Um, I actually haven't read any of this miniseries yet, so I'm, at this point I'm just going to wait for issue number six and then read the whole thing at once. Black Widow number 13, the Villain's Reign variant. Um, I'm a couple issues behind on this. I think I missed number 12, so I might have to grab it digitally, or maybe I'll just wait until it hits Marvel Unlimited, because I think number 11 started a new story arc, and that, yeah, that's where I, uh, ha that's where I fell off, so I need to read 11 and 12, and then this, uh, I'm not even sure what the new story arc is, but I love that cover, and I can't wait to catch up on this. Darkhold Omega, so this is the end of the entire Darkhold storyline. I'm way behind on it. I read the first couple issues. I have all of them, but I, I just I fell behind. So, um, but now that I've got them on, now that it's over, I'm just gonna grab them all in a pile and get through these, and uh, should be pretty good. Electra Black, White, and Blood number one with the awesome John Boy Myers variant. I love John Boy Myers. Um, I, ha I didn't get the chance to read this one. I wanted to uh, before this, but I didn't get a chance to read it. But uh, this is just following in the footsteps of. Carnage, Black, White, and Blood, and Wolverine, and Deadpool, um, just, you know, more anthology stories, all just colored in black and white and red. Um, so I didn't read the Deadpool one, because I don't love Deadpool, uh, and I read the Carnage, but I love the Wolverine one. And now Elektra is next, uh, that should be pretty cool. Shang-Chi number seven, so this kicks off a new story arc. Um, this issue was really cool. It's mostly about uh, giving you some backstory on Shang-Chi's mother, and they are pulling elements from the movie with where she comes from, but it's not exactly the same. So don't think that if you've seen the movie, you've read this as well, because it is different. There are differences, but there are some similarities as well. So uh, it's a really cool story. Um, it's going to lead to more revelations, especially the last page looked really cool and really got me excited for the next for the next few issues, I won't say what it is, but it was a really cool page, so I like this one quite a bit. Wastelanders Doom number one, again, um, this, I, I haven't read this one yet, I'm holding off, I'm still waiting to find time to reread uh, Old Man Logan so that I can then read, um, you know, get that refreshed in my mind and then read the new Wastelanders, Wolverine, and Hawkeye, and Doom, and I think there's a Black Widow coming as well. I think I got the, I got the Old Man Quill too, so I'm uh, gonna reread all that and then read all these and it should be fun. This is X-Men number six. Um, the nice trading card variant cover, I love these. 
I do enjoy this title, but because I haven't read any of the Hickman era stuff, I do feel like I'm way behind and I don't quite understand what's going on. And I mean, I get the basics, you know, they've terraformed Mars and all that stuff, but um, there's some stuff going on with Cyclops that I don't understand. And maybe I'm not supposed to because of what it said the next issue is going to be about. Um, I actually was going to drop off this, but then the synopsis for the next issue sounded pretty cool. So I'll probably hang on just a little bit longer. Um, I do have plans to catch up on all of the Hickman era stuff. I know he didn't write all the X books, but I'm just just that era from Hawks Pox all the way to now. I have plans to catch up on all that, and maybe this will make more sense. Uh, I'll probably drop off this at some point, but for now, it's been pretty entertaining. As for DC, speaking of moves that are unprecedented for me, I actually have already read every single DC book that I bought yesterday except for one because I'm so far behind. But everything else I've already read and it's all really good stuff. So Batman number 119, even though I haven't, I still haven't read the Tiny and Era stuff, 118 kicked off a brand new storyline written by Joshua Williamson. Uh, Batman is trying to figure out um, if a couple members of Batman Inc. murdered this other guy named Abyss. This is more, well that was in 118, but the, this is more of that. The, the mystery is deepening. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and just started started reading with 118 and I continued on with this one. Uh, it doesn't really reference anything from the Tining era. Uh, maybe it does a little bit, but, um, but uh, there's some great Lex Luthor stuff in this too. So this one was a lot of fun. Um, I'm glad to be back on Batman. So this is the one I didn't read because I'm so far behind. Question Lobo number eight. So this is the last issue of this mini slash maxi series it's not quite a mini but it's not quite a maxi either um i'm only i'm still i have only read the first couple and i really enjoyed it so i've got to get caught up on that i did miss issue number seven so i'll probably have to just grab that on comiXology or something but um other than that i can't wait to get caught up with this one. Oh boy so one of the best books that i've read so far uh this week dark knights of steel number three this series is so good um it's you know if you're watching this, you probably know what this is about, but you know, it, DC characters, but set in sword and sorcery times. Um, we have different warring houses, if you will. Um, and it, the, the stakes just keep getting raised every issue. I don't want to say anything more, but I will say that this book was so good. It's one of those rare books where, you know, I'm, I'm here by myself, reading by myself, and as I'm turning the page, when I see something cool, I'm exclaiming "Whoa!" or I'm or I'm talking out loud to myself about what's happening in the book. That's how good this book is. That may sound a little bit weird, but that's how good this book is. So I cannot recommend this one highly enough. I love this series. So Detective Comics number 1047. Again, I haven't caught up with any of the Tiny Era stuff. Um, I even you know the last 1046 came out. I know I said that. Um, I haven't read it because I haven't caught up, and I still haven't caught up, but I went rogue and decided to read this issue anyway because it starts off a brand new storyline, this whole Arkham Tower storyline. Um, Arkham Asylum, I guess, is no more. Again, I haven't read that, but now Arkham is now a tower in the middle of Gotham City, and the story starts, you know, seven days after the Arkham Tower opened, and oh, look how, look how awesome it is and how many breakthroughs we're making with all the villains and then about halfway through it jumps to day 24 and just everything's on fire and oracle's trying to contact nightwing and batwoman's there and batgirl and you know stuff has gone crazy and we don't know how it got that way so it kind of reminded me of a, a miniature version of future state in that way where it shows you what is going to come and then the story is going to be about how we got there so um, super cool. It, it, I was able to read this without having to know anything that happened in Detective Comics prior. Although I think if I had read those, I would have picked up on a couple other uh, character who they were. Uh, but that's okay, because I, I just wanted to read it. It was really fun. But this one was really cool. I recommend this as well. Justice League Incarnate number three of five. Um, the follow-up series to Infinite Frontier, which I love. I don't love this miniseries as much. The It's a lot of multiversal stuff, which I do like, but it's... It's weird. I just don't... It, there's a lot of characters, and um, I just don't love this as much as I wanted to, but uh, this issue was cool. I like this better than the first two because it has different heroes. Uh, the, the different, Some of the different heroes of Justice League incarnate in different worlds, different Earths. So it was cool to see some of the different Earths that they go to. I'll probably go ahead and get the last two just because it is, you know, just a five-issue miniseries, but um, I don't love this one as quite as much as I want to. Suicide Squad number 11. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, it's it's kind of my sleeper pick of, of all the book or at least all the DC books 
Um, I thought I was going to hop off this one a while back, and then I got caught up on it. It's just a really fun story. Um, Ambush Bug here on the cover is, is a really fun addition. And things are starting to come to a head. Rick Flagg and his group are about to go up against Amanda Waller and her group, although her group doesn't want to be with her. It's just crazy, and uh, I'm really liking this one too. And then another one that was also really, really good, Superman Son of Kal-El number 6. Tom Taylor with the one-two punch this week of this and Dark Knights of Steel. Um, yeah, just more of... of the awesome story that they're telling. Um, Jay Nakamura gets in on some of the action a little bit. They're trying to get information on Henry Bendix and what he's doing with all of these uh, new super people that are popping up. Uh, we get a really cool interaction with another character. I won't see who it is just in case you don't know. But uh, yeah, this one was really good as well. I really enjoyed it. It was a lighter image in Indie Week. We got a couple image books, Noctera, Blacktop Bill Special. I read this one today. So it's been a couple months since Noctera, Noctera went on a sort of a hiatus. It told the, the first six issues were its own story arc and then it kind of took a break. This is, I think it's just a one shot, um, just sort of giving us a little bit more of a background on Blacktop Bill. We didn't get a whole lot of his story. Uh, in the main Noctera, uh, the first story arc, though this uh, one shot uh, seeks to fill in some of those answers. We still didn't get everything answered. We still don't quite know how he is like this, but at least we know a little bit more about who he is. This almost could be read even if you haven't read any Noctera books whatsoever, because this was almost just kind of a nice, you know, almost like a nice one shot, like a thriller kind of thing. But um, I would recommend the rest of Noctera. I, don't, I wouldn't read this first before those ones, but this one was a really good story on its own. Spawn number 325. So I haven't caught up on this yet, but I have proven hopefully that I can do it. And I'm going to uh, with Spawn at some point and all the other gunslingers and king spawns and all that stuff. So I just, I went with the nice, I think that's Saigor. just went with the nice, uh, that cover. I uh, can't wait to catch up on this. The other one I haven't caught up on yet is Not All Robots number five. I want to say this is the last issue of this mini series. Uh, if it is, I'm going to go ahead and read it all, or if it's not, I'll wait till the next one and then get caught up. Odin's Eye, number four from Bad Idea. So I guess this is a weekly book because I've talked about it every week for the last four weeks now. Uh, I think it's a five-issue miniseries, so I'll probably wait until next week and then read the whole thing. So I got a book called West, uh, West number one from Uncivilized Comics. This is a pretty neat book. It's it's not quite treasury size, but it's not definitely not comic size as well. Um, it's all black and white. It um, it feels the the paper is a uh, you know has a roughness to it. This one feels like an old school indie comic, like when indie comics were really really indie way back in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, this uh, feels like that. It's about these two guys who are basically farmers, I guess, uh, but they also know magic a little bit, sort of. And there's a corporation which is kind of hurting their crops and they want to um, they want to pull a Robin Hood and maybe rob from the corporation to help themselves out, maybe to help other people as well. But in the process of doing that, they find more than what they bargained for from that corporation. And that's all I'll say. So this was a really fun one, like I said, all black and white. Um, but really good. Uh, I think it's an eight issue series. I might be wrong about that, but I'm interested to see what happens next. And then after that, I just got one extra little goodie, uh, just sort of on a whim. Conan, Battle for the Serpent Crown. Um, I actually picked this up because once I got caught up on Spider-Man, or once I started in the Beyond storyline anyway, when Ben Riley comes back, I started to think, hey, I don't know what Ben riley has been up to since Spider-Geddon. I don't know if he's even been around since Spider-Geddon. I know he was in a few issues of Iron Man, but I'm way behind on that series as well. So I don't really know what he's been up to. So I, I Googled him just to see what's going on, and he's in at least one issue of this miniseries. I think this is a miniseries, uh, yeah, five-issue miniseries, and Ben Riley is in at least one of these. So as I was reading that, it just sounded like a cool story. Conan is in modern day, um, as he is, you know, he's hanging out with the Savage Avengers, which I haven't read that either, but he's in Las Vegas for some reason in this book. Ben Riley shows up at one point. Uh, Black Panther's on the back, so maybe Black Panther pops up, I'm not sure. But um, I just thought it sounded like a cool story, and my shop had a copy sitting on the shelf, so I thought I'd grab it. And that's it, guys. Um, it's a slightly smaller week than what I normally do, but I'm actually trying to mink every week like this. I just have a little bit smaller of a stack, a little bit more manageable uh, of, a, of a stack of books to read, because I still have so much to read, but it felt really good to actually read what I bought and to get caught up on stuff. So I'm gonna try to stay on that path for 2022 and just get caught up because there's so many great stories out there. So guys, I appreciate you watching this video. If you like this video or any of the other videos on my channel, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a sarcastic thumbs up. 
And if nothing else, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you picked up this week. Uh, was your stack bigger than normal, smaller than normal? Did you get any uh, cool stuff? Have you finally caught up on a big series that you've been meaning to? It's a great feeling. Uh, just let me know. Uh, I love comic books. I could talk about them with a room full of people or just to a camera. Guys, don't forget, comic books are supposed to be fun. They are just another fun form of storytelling. Uh, there is plenty to look through that you can find something you like, and it's very easy. Just simply ignore the things that you don't like. Also, don't forget, it doesn't matter how much you buy every week or every month or whatever. Uh, what makes a great comic book haul is that the things that you do get are special to you, that, uh, that, that you know, resonate so, so much with you that you're talking to yourself as well as you're reading the book, just like I did with Dark Knights of Steel. So... Um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you buy one book, ten books, a hundred books. Just as long as you enjoy what you're getting, that's what makes a great combo book haul. So guys, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.